Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the Wreath Network on TryHackMe. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 33, Personal PC Pivoting. We found two ports open in the previous task. RDP won't be of much use to us without credentials or at least a hash, although past the hash attacks are often restricted through RDP anyway. However, the web server is worth looking into. Wreath told us that he worked on his website using a local environment on his own PC. So this bleeding edge version may contain some vulnerabilities that we could use to exploit the target. Before we can do that, however, we must figure out how to access the development web server on Wreath's PC from our attacking machine. We have two immediate options for this, Chisel and Plink. Uh, so what we're going to first do is uh, if you followed the recommended route of using S Shuttle to pivot from the web server, then a Chisel forward proxy is recommended here as it will be relatively easy to connect through to uh, connect to through the S shuttle connection without requiring a relay. Look back at the chisel task if you need help with this. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to pause the video and I will get that set up and I'll show you guys how I do that. I am going to try to do this using a chisel forward proxy just to make it nice and simple. So I will be right back and we'll walk through that. All right, I missed something quick. Uh, one thing to note, I had uh, I took a break between the last section and this current video. Um, I had my S shuttle session die because the network went offline. So one thing to be aware of, whenever you if you're trying to do this step and you can't reach the server for Evil Win RM, make sure that you have S shuttle going, just because it will mess things up otherwise. Uh, as far as pivoting goes. So one thing that we need to do first is actually add in a firewall rule. So when using this option, you will need to open up a port in the Windows firewall to allow the forward connection to be made. The syntax for opening a port using NetSH looks something like this. So in this specific case, we need to open up a uh, port that is going to force it backwards uh, to us. So I'm on the Windows server right now. This is the get server that I'm on. Um, and we can go ahead and run the net sh command here. So it's net sh adv advanced firewall firewall add rule name equals. Uh, we'll go with um, dark chisel. And I'm going to get rid of the dash because it's Windows and it, I don't know if it's going to get fussy with that, but I'd rather not take the chance. Dir equals in uh, action equals allow and then protocol equals tcp and then local port equals um in this specific case i'm going to do uh, 19,000 for the firewall and i'm actually going to write that down real quick so that i do not forget it um and have a potential issue there so that'll be for the windows firewall for chisel and that's going to be what that that's our local port that we are going to send the uh website that's running on his local machine back to so what can we do with that then um what we're going to go ahead and do is open up that uh the local port with the chisel forward proxy um and with that we will be to access or able to access from our attacking machine cali uh using s shuttle um, since we can access that Windows, uh, the, the server that we're currently on, um, it's routable via S shuttle. Once we have that done, we should be able to uh, start attacking the website pretty easily. So uh, uh, one quick note, please use the name uh, dash username naming convention. So in this case, mine's backwards, but you get the general gist. Uh, now what we want to go ahead and do is jump back up to the chisel section and I'll go ahead I'm doing that over on the uh, my other monitor, um, and I will type out the commands for us in this specific case. So what we want to go ahead and do is head over to the GitHub release pages, which let me go ahead and grab this. This is the release pages for uh, Chisel specifically, and we can go ahead and grab the Windows. I'm going to try the 386 one. Uh, this should be the 64-bit variant, um, which will run by default on Windows. 64-bit really isn't any different. I'm running this for compatibility, uh, just so that I know it's going to work. So we've got that all downloaded, and now we need to get it to the Windows machine. 
Uh, with that, I'm going to swap back to my working session. Uh, this is just in my upload directory, which is my typical working directory for serving files out to the machine that I'm attacking. Um, in this specific case, um, so we're jumping through one machine. Let me figure out how we're going to do this. I'll be right back. All right, I'm just being silly. Uh, we can actually just upload this very easily using the WinRM upload module. Probably why Mir mentioned it earlier. Uh, so maybe we can go ahead and do is move uh, dot dot uh, downloads, and then what was the name of that download? Probably chisel something. Yeah, chisel uh, with a bunch of garbage at the end to this directory, and then we can gun zip that chisel file, and let's see what we got. So we've got chisel. Uh, 1.7.6, uh, I'm going to move that, uh, rename it to chisel, actually, is that a directory? It doesn't look like one. It is not, so let's move that. I'm going to rename it into just chisel.exe, so makes it easy. Um, and now what I'm going to go ahead and do is restart my, here, let me clear this. We're going to restart my evil win RM session. Um, and then I should be able to upload chisel.exe. Um, let's see if this works. You should have this named by the way to mention, uh, <laughs> be better behaved than I am. You should have this chisel, uh, and then your username. Um, and in this specific case, it's a little bit too late for me, but make sure that you name it that, but we'll give this just a moment while we're doing that. I'm going to go ahead and check the syntax for chisel for getting it to be a port forward let's see give me just a moment i'm going to pause this while it is uploading and we'll be right back all right and we're back uh so i had to do a two-part um uh two piece to this equation uh we need to set up the chisel server which i've gone ahead and done on the compromised git server so you can see that command down here where I selected the chisel binary, put it in server mode, and then I have it listening on the port that I opened up in the firewall. And then I specify that this is a SOX5 forward proxy that we're using. Now we need to go back to this machine that we're currently operating on, um, our attack machine. We're going to connect to that forward proxy through um, the S shuttle connection that we have open. So it makes it fairly trivial to actually connect to it. Um, in this specific way, we can go ahead and do this with chisel. Uh, let's see if this is going to work. Okay, there we go. So I just installed that with apt, make it easy, just because it's a good thing to have. So chisel, client, uh, the target IP that we're connecting to is 10, 200, and then it is 72, 150. Uh, the target or the listening port is 18,000 in my specific case. The proxy port that we're going to be listening on is I will put mine on the local port um, 9090 and then we need to specify that this is going to be a SOX proxy. So we'll go ahead and run that and it looks like we were able to connect to that. We'll be back in just a moment. I'll go ahead and get this all pulled up just to confirm that it's working. All right, uh, much to my chagrin, we are back. And uh, man, it really helps if you type the correct port when you're opening up the firewall rule. Um, so I had to break this down with mirror because I couldn't get this to connect. As you can see up here, uh, I had 19,000 type and that was wrong. Uh, make sure that you type the correct firewall rule. If this is not working for you, it is probably the firewall rule that's doing it. Uh, so that being said, what I ended up doing was I, uh, got chisel started. So this is the full firewall rule that I ran Uh great rule name for that. Um, and then you can see down here, the chisel exe server specifying the port after confirming that I did get an okay back from that, and then uh, specifying that it is gonna be a SOX5 proxy. Then if I go back over here, you can see that I have chisel running in client mode, connecting to that host. This is going through S shuttle, so it is a little bit slow, but it works uh, on that target port that the proxy is running on. And then I have it listening on a local port 9090, um, and I've specified that it's a SOX proxy. So. We can see that it successfully was able to connect to that, opened up to the listener locally, and we were able to connect, albeit with a little bit of latency, although that is to be expected. So that pivot is up and running. Uh, the next thing we need to do is access the website in your web browser uh, using Foxy Proxy if you used the recommended forward proxy, or directly if you used a port forward. 
using the Wappalizer browser extension or an alternative uh, method, identify the server-side programming language, including the version number used on the website. So in this case, let me go ahead and pull Chrome. Uh, I already had Foxy Proxy set up. You can just install Chrome pretty easily. I have instructions linked in an, or another video in this playlist uh, to install Chrome on uh, Kali Linux. Um, and what I have done is I added into Foxy Proxy this 9090 proxy uh, that is running on Sox 5. So I can connect to my local proxy now and effectively reach his development website. And we can see his development website right here. Uh, this will take a while to load. <laughs> uh, this took quite a while to load because you're going between two proxies. But I also installed Wappalizer, and we can see from Wappalizer that we are running PHP 7.4.11. We can get that in here, uh, PHP 7.4.11, and there we go. That's going to do it for the uh, this video. Um, in next time, we're going to cover task 34, but until then, happy hacking.